Hi, welcome to my brief overview of the history of the Brown Beret organization. The purpose of this video is to educate you on the historical context that shifted a small organization of eager Mexican-American students to a platoon of militarized radical Chicano youth. So let's begin. In the late summer of 1965, an African-American man by the name of Marquette Fry was pulled over by a white California Highway Patrol officer on suspicion of driving while intoxicated. Unfortunately for Marquette Fry, being a black man in Los Angeles during this time attracted unnecessary and unwanted police hostility and aggression. This single incident acted as a spark that ignited the mounting animosity black Angelinos had towards the overwhelmingly racist white law enforcement agencies of Los Angeles. This spark triggered a six-day riot in African-American community of Watts, resulting in numerous casualties and millions of dollars in property damage. It was this act of civil unrest by the black community that prompted organizations like the Los Angeles County Human Relations Community and the Wilshire Boulevard Temple's Camp Hess Kramer to focus their attention on preventing a similar uproar in the large Mexican-American community of East Los Angeles. Therefore, in April of 1966, they held a three-day leadership conference for Mexican-American youth where they discussed social issues affecting their community, as well as practical methods to ameliorate these issues. Six of the students who attended this conference later joined together and created the Young Citizens for Community Action Organization, or YCCA. This group focused on assessing the needs of their community via surveys, as well as participating in political activities, such as supporting school board candidate Julian Nava during his campaign for member of the Los Angeles Board of Education. During this time, the YCCA was also working directly with Father John B. Luce in the, of the Episcopal Church of the Epiphany in Lincoln Heights. Father Luce, having had prior experience working with troubled youth in East Harlem and Jersey City, actively assisted the YCCA, exposing them to prominent Mexican-American activists like Richard Alatorre and Cesar Chavez. This exposure prompted their later name change from Young Citizens for Community Action to Young Chicanos for Community Action. In addition, Father Luce assisted the YCCA members in acquiring a small coffee shop on Olympic Boulevard, which they would come to call La Piraña. La Piraña quickly became a hotspot for Chicano youth activism. Several events revolving around the community, around, around community organizing, were held there exposing the larger Chicano youth community to civil rights leaders like Cesar Chavez, Corky Gonzalez, Reyes Lopez Tijerina, Stokely Carmichael, and Hubert Rapp Brown. Unfortunately for the YCCA, this congregation of Chicano youth, as well as their active participation in civil rights activism and their glorification of radical leaders at La Piraña, drew the unwanted attention of Los Angeles law enforcement. After actively protesting violent interactions between police and Mexican-American families in East Los Angeles, law enforcement began to harass YCCA members and all whom entered La Piraña. After multiple accounts of unnecessary police brutality against Chicano youth, YCCA members began to adopt a more militaristic form of attire in solidarity with the efforts of organizations such as the Puerto Rican Young Lords and the Black Panther Party. This change in dress, coupled with their rising animosity towards law enforcement, led to the change in their name to the Brown Berets, coincidentally given to them by law enforcement themselves. However, it was not until the Brown Beret leader David Sanchez's incarceration in February 1968 that the goals and guidelines of the new Brown Beret organization were created. In this three-page manifesto called The Birth of a New Symbol, he outlined the purpose of the organization as well as establishing a strict militant hierarchy to portray discipline and efficiency as instruments of social change. Sanchez also filled his manifesto with anti-intellectual and anti-middle class rhetoric, emphasizing the switch in member participation from politicized students to militant barrio kids. It was a switch in ideology within the once integrationist YCCA organization that shows the youth's disillusionment with the conventional electoral approach, resulting in a push towards a more radical form of political participation. Once the organization was solidified, it began to service the community by acting as shock troops for the East LA walkouts. Though the Brown Berets would later be plagued with internal and external conflicts, it is apparent that out of frustration with the system and in defense against police brutality, this organization served its role as the protectors of the community while simultaneously stimulating discussions on Mexican-American identity and anti-establishment movements. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.